our Navy remains a symbol of the United States, of our dedicated and skilled sailors, of our technological genius and our massive but controlled military strength, which patrols the oceans of the world on a mission of peace. In the shipyards of Newport News, under the glow of cranes taller than skyscrapers, on a dry dock that seemed to swallow the horizon, the United States began building something the world had never seen before. A warship so advanced, so expensive, so politically explosive, that even inside the Pentagon it sparked debates, controversy, and urgency. This wasn't just another carrier. This was the USS Gerald R. Ford, the flagship of America's next century of naval power. But what most people never realized is that behind the official timelines, public speeches, and polished press releases, there was another plan, a Pentagon-level push, a set of extras, additional requirements, funding accelerators, classified decisions, and timeline pressures that reshaped the Ford-class project into something far more ambitious and far more complicated than the public ever knew. Tonight, on Armory Unveiled, we take you inside the decisions, the technologies, and the hidden urgency behind the building of the USS Gerald R. Ford. Welcome to the story behind the Pentagon's extra push. To understand the Ford class, we have to start with one simple question. Why did America need a new carrier at all? For decades, the Nimitz class served as the backbone of U.S. naval power. Ten floating air bases, unmatched in firepower, but also aging, heavily crewed, and increasingly expensive to maintain. By the early 2000s, the Navy realized something uncomfortable. The world's threats were changing, but its carriers weren't. China was building missiles designed specifically to kill aircraft carriers. Russia was modernizing submarine fleets. Iran was testing swarm tactics. And across the world, naval warfare was shifting toward electronic attack cyber disruption, and long-range precision strikes. The Pentagon concluded America needed a carrier that wasn't just incrementally better, but generationally superior. One that carried more aircraft, launched more sorties, used less crew, produced more power, and could survive in 21st century warfare. Thus began the Ford class the most ambitious warship ever attempted. But what came next went far beyond the official clan. Publicly, the Ford class had a clear mission, modernize the U.S. carrier fleet. But inside the Pentagon, classified memos and strategic briefings outlined additional layers to the project, the so-called Pentagon Extras, these were additional strategic pressures and hidden goals, including 1. A timeline driven by China's naval expansion. Not openly admitted, but heavily influential. China wasn't just building ships, it was manufacturing fleets. The Ford had to launch before Chinese carrier strike groups became too capable. Two a requirement for an electrical power surplus decades ahead of time. The Ford generates three times the electrical power of a Nimitz, not for current systems, but for weapons that didn't yet exist. Directed energy, electromagnetic defenses, high power radar arrays. Three, a mandate to automate, drastically. This was not a ship built for the 1990s. It was built for the 2050s, and automation was the backbone. The Pentagon demanded fewer crewmen, fewer mechanical parts, fewer vulnerable systems. Four, integration of classified systems not disclosed in public documents. This included advanced electronic warfare systems, cyber defense layers, and next-generation stealth sensors. These extras didn't just modify the Ford class, they reshaped it, adding complexity, 
cost, and pressure. Building the USS Gerald R. Ford wasn't construction. It was engineering shock therapy. A carrier is already one of the most complex machines humans build. But the Ford? It introduced more new technologies than any carrier in U.S. history. Major systems introduced. EMALS, Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. AAG, Advanced Arresting Gear. Dual Band Radar, Advanced Weapons Elevators. Integrated Power System. New Nuclear Reactor Design. Reimagined Flight Deck. Every system was cutting edge, and none were proven at scale. The Pentagon's push meant that shipyard teams were integrating numerous technologies that had never been tested in real-world operations. And that meant in stakes, complications, delays, and a ship that would eventually cost over $13 billion. But at this stage, the Pentagon wasn't slowing down. They pushed even harder. The electromagnetic catapult, emails, was the first technological storm. Steam catapults had launched U.S. jets for 70 years. But steam is slow, heavy, maintenance intense, and hard on aircraft. Emails promised faster launches, smoother acceleration, lower airframe stress, higher sortie rate, lighter equipment, but in testing, it failed, repeatedly. Jet launches aborted, software glitches, power failures, component overheating. Critics inside Congress began calling the Ford a $12 billion prototype. But the Pentagon stuck to its guns. Emails wasn't just an upgrade. It was mandatory for the future of naval aviation. This system alone represented the Pentagon's extra requirement, the insistence that the Ford class leap into the future, not just step into it. Nothing caused more political fire than the advanced weapons elevators. These elevators, powered magnetically, were designed to move ammunition faster, safer, and with fewer crew. But their reliability during construction was disastrous. Out of 11 elevators, only two worked when the ship delivered. For months, then years, crews worked to fix them. The Navy's top admirals were questioned in Congress. Costs ballooned. Schedules slipped. But the Pentagon refused to remove the elevators from the Ford. Why? Because they weren't just elevators. They were the key to a 33% higher sortie rate the foundational promise of the Ford class. Remove them, and the entire carrier concept failed. Beneath the flight deck lies the Ford's twin reactors, the beating heart of the ship. These aren't the reactors of the Nimitz class. They generate three times the electrical power, not for today's weapons, but for things the Pentagon expects in the next decades. Railguns, high-energy lasers, microwave weapons, advanced radar arrays, electric drones. This is where the hidden Pentagon plan shows itself again. They wanted a ship that could evolve, not one that would become obsolete. The USS Gerald R. Ford is essentially a power plant disguised as a carrier. What most people don't know is that the Ford's construction speed wasn't just about shipbuilding. It was about geopolitics. Classified Pentagon strategy documents showed that the Ford needed to reach IOC before China's first electromagnetic catapult carrier launched. Hypersonic threats matured. U.S. global naval commitments outgrew its aging naval fleet. The next Nimitz retirement window. This pressure created the Pentagon's extras fast-tacking testing, accelerating integration, overlapping development cycles, running unproven systems at full scale. This wasn't ideal, but it was deemed necessary. America needed the Ford operational, 
even if it meant building while fixing. Despite the challenges, despite the cost, despite the controversies, the USS Gerald R. Ford finally deployed in 2023, and its performance stunned critics. Higher sortie generation, quieter operations, less maintenance, better deck flow, stronger electronic warfare capabilities, massive electrical reserves, capability to operate next-generation aircraft, including drones. It wasn't just a carrier. It was a technological platform for the next 50 years. The Pentagon's plan, the extras, the hidden layers, the push, led to a warship that represents something deeper. Control of the oceans in the 21st century. A ship designed not for the wars of the past, but the conflicts of the future. This includes carrier-launched drones, AI-assisted flight ops, electric strike weapons, long-range stealth aviation, and electronic warfare supremacy. The Ford class is the foundation. The USS Gerald R. Ford wasn't easy to build. It wasn't cheap. It wasn't politically smooth. But in the end, it became exactly what the Pentagon intended, a warship decades ahead of its time, a technological gamble that paid off, and the spearhead of American naval power for the next half century. This has been Armory Unveiled. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for our next deep dive into the weapons that shape our world.